So this marble tile here that I spent uh, about $10 on at Lowe's, I use this as the background in that typographic poster. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I did that. So just one quick tip before we jump over into Photoshop. I think it's very handy to throw all of your texture assets that you collect over the years into one folder on your machine. That way, when time is of the essence and you're working on a project and you need to grab something, you're able to go to a folder where you've got all your texture uh, laid out and ready to go. That way you don't have to go hunting for it. You, you know, oh yeah, I got a brick wall over here that's going to be super useful. And it's in, this, it's in the same place every time, whenever you need a background, whenever you need a texture. So very handy. I do this with all my assets. I collect them all in one, one folder. That way I know exactly where they are. Anyway, guys, let's go jump over to Photoshop. So we got this uh, barnwood texture here that uh, looks really cool on its own. And we got a typographic design that we want to stamp on top of it. But th there's something that just doesn't really work. The, the texture is too strong. It's taking away from, uh, from, the, from the typographic design. So what we're going to do, I'll turn this off here so we can look at the texture. We're going to go down here to the adjustment, um, adjustment layers tab and we're gonna add a gradient map on top of our texture. Now, by default, the gradient that comes up is black and white. That's not the effect that we're going for, but the cool thing about this is it's non-destructive. It's on its own adjustment layer here, so you're able to turn it on and off, and your original layer um, stays the same underneath without being, without being modified. This this adjustment layer you can also drag into other documents. So whenever when we work on this, you're able to um, you're able to take this adjustment and apply it to another image, so you can stay consistent across a project. So the trick, what I'm going to do here is we're going to take the gradient map, and right now it's mapping black and white onto the shadows and the highlights of this image. If we double click on the gradient, it pulls up the the gradient editor. So we can manually come in here and adjust what the highlights are going to um, be mapped as. So we want the highlights to be mapped at a red like that, and we want the shadows to be a dark darker red, like a burgundy here. So what's cool about this is you have full control over the like it's a you're creating a duotone image essentially. Now you can map more colors on. You can see that there's gradients here that are available that have that have more. The results on an image like this start to get a little bit funky. I like to keep it keep it simple and st stick with a duotone. But now you have full control over it. It's fully adjustable. So there we got a burgundy mapping to red. We can hit OK. And now that texture, which is underneath, goes from being quite harsh to being a nice subtle red on red gradient or red on red texture. And now your typographic design just looks really sharp over top of it. So this can be handy for um, Instagram. This could be handy for t-shirt mockups. There's all sorts of things that you can, can do now where your textures that might've been a little bit too harsh or a little bit too strong, you can customize them this way and they become all that more useful. Say you have a logo that you're presenting to a client and they've got they've got a set of brand colors. You can get into your gradient and select the colors that are applicable for their brand and create something very custom for them. You can also click this reverse here and invert the, the gradient that you are mapping onto the image. It gives you a kind of cool effect. We can go back into the gradient by double clicking and you can adjust the contrast on the image by dragging your shadow node down. So you could really strengthen the shadows and then the highlight, you can create a high contrast effect this way by shortening how that gradient maps onto, the, onto your background. Now at the beginning of the video, I promised to show you how I created that aim for the top poster that was behind me. So here's that marble tile I was holding, which I think is very cool. It's a very useful texture. And here's that aim for the top typographic design. Same, same thing going on with the original. Uh, it's just a bit too contrasty, so this design isn't showing up all that well. 
to create this effect, I kind of, I didn't just use that gradient map. I also used another metal grunge texture, which we can drag in here. And I set the blending mode to exclusion. So now we've got a combination. You can see the marble poking through in certain areas, but then that steel texture is showing through over here. So it's a nice hybrid texture. It's one way of getting more out of your texture files is combining two together. Anyway, just like the just like the barn wood texture, we're gonna go in here and we're gonna create a gradient map. The gradient map is gonna map everything underneath it. So these two layers that are affecting each other through the blending modes, they now have a gradient that's being mapped on top of them. I think this actually looks really cool with black and white, but we're gonna get a bit more dramatic. As you saw on the wall, there was a blue to orange sort of uh, effect on there. And we'll do, do the same thing where we're making the orange a bit more vibrant, kind of increasing the contrast, making that brighter. And let's darken this down a bit so we get a bit more of the purple. And for consistency's sake, I ended up on that poster just increasing the levels to get a little bit more contrasty effect. And there we go. That's how I created that poster on the wall out of a $10 marble tile and a sheet of steel that I photographed, I don't know, somewhere. So by combining those two textures and a gradient map, you get something that's very unique looking, also very easily adjustable. So hopefully you guys like that trick. It's something that I've been using a lot in my work lately, and I think it's a very powerful technique, uh, very simple. I like the fact that it's non-destructive, so it means that you're not uh, you're not destroying the, the texture that's underneath. It's easily modifiable, just a simple adjustment layer that you're able to, to change uh, as your tastes change, as your projects change, and uh, I think it's very powerful so if you like this video and you want to see more like this it'd be great if you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel you can leave a comment down below if there's anything that you'd like to see me cover in the near future and i'd be happy to try and cover that off for you thanks for thanks for joining me and uh we'll see you in the next one